Welcome to A Quest for Metal. Today we are on another year. We are on 2015. We're going back in time, boys. And we're going to give you my top 10 albums from 2015. So, you know how these videos go. Pop down on the You know how these things go. Pop down below in the comments below. I'm fucking it up again. So, put the albums down below in the comment box. Your favourites of 2015. <laughs> that wasn't so hard, was it, Questy? So, yeah, pop your favourites down below. And let's get stuck in before I just keep going on repeat and fucking my words up. So, let's get started with the number 10. Now, the number 10 is a band called Cattle Decapitation. With the bat with the album, The Anthropocene Extinction. Holy shit. I need from the art with a fucking corpse and it's like bottle caps in it, kind of like, you know, something from the sea, like a turtle or something. I knew the lyrics would be good. I knew the music was going to be heavy because it was a brutal, brutal album cover. And yes, it fucking was. Holy shit, some of these songs, the drumming, but Travis Ryan, mm, the vocals, intense. Some of the best in the game, those high shrieks, those low growls, it's got everything. It's got bloody everything. Range of a madman. I love all these songs. And you know when it gets to that vocal line where it's like, We fucking die tonight and it's perfectly alright with me. So good. You gotta sing along with it. That was awful, but you still gotta sing along with it. I love this album. It's a masterpiece. And I wanna go listen to them again right now. So number nine is Children of the Night by Tribulation. One of the best Tribulation albums, the album that got me into them. This kind of blend of black metal, gothic metal, doom metal, all together. With these kind of sexy, vampire-esque vocals. Holy shit. Shivers. Shivers. Tribulation, I've said it before, one of the last bands I saw live before COVID hit. So, again, holds a place in my heart. Love the latest album. And this one, it's going to be hard to see which one's better. It's between the latest one and this one. Um, down Below's good as well, but... It's between these fucking two. And I don't know which one I prefer, but this one's a masterpiece of an album as well. So if you enjoyed the newest album this year, you'll enjoy that one. So go give Children of the Night a listen. What are you waiting for? Number eight is Front Schwein by Marduk. Front Schwein, 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 um, is one of the more melodic, uh, catchier kind of albums by Marduk. Um, it, it is on the war side of things, and it is intense, um, but I think the songs on this album are probably the catchiest they've ever done. And I'm, I'm putting that stamp of approval on that questy statement. I think it is the catchiest album they've ever done. Um, and you, some people might hate that about it. I love it. I think making a black metal album and the songs are catchy and memorable is a good thing. I think. I think some of them need to be, you know... <laughs> Like, atmospheric and like, whoa. But this isn't that. This is a catchy fucking album. It's like a gem in their discography. They have a lot of gems, but this is like a, a nice little round sparkly gem that the crows want in between all the other gems. This is like the cool gem. And it's why it's high in my list of Marduk albums. I love it to pieces. And French Rain, it's, it's an underrated album. Go listen to it. Number seven. What should not be unearthed? by Niall. This is an underrated Niall album. One of the newer ones, but songs like Call to Destruction, Ooh, in the name of a moon, in the name of a god, a moon. And of course, evil to cast out evil. Evil to cast out evil. Ooh, ho, 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 probably my favorite, or well, one of my favorite Niall songs of all time. That's gotta be up there. This is intense album. The production is amazing. Amazing production. What can I say? I, I love all the songs in this album. I think it's a masterpiece and Niall can do no wrong. So what should not be nerfed? It's easily making it onto this list. Number six, Scar Sighted by Leviathan. Ooh, Leviathan has some amazing albums like Tenth Sublevel of Suicide and Massive Conspiracy Against All Life. And then you got this, which is an amazing album, but so very different to those. So very different to those kind of depressive, suicidally kind of black metal albums. This is more experimental, more 
mm, avant-garde. Exp- I don't want to say proggy, but you know the you know the words I'm talking about. You know the you can read my mind. Uh, <laughs> this is a very weird album, but I think it's catchy as well. Uh, it's not the catchiest. I think Tentacles of Horror is the catchiest, but this is. This is probably the one that most people get into, Leviathan From. It's the most popular album. It's the one everyone loves the most. And I love it a lot. But I just... If we're talking about my favourites, Tenth Sub-Level has that kind of depressive atmosphere, which I love. But if you love something a bit different, Scar Sighted is for you. And it's a great album, which is why it's high on my list. So, yeah. Leviathan. Scar Sighted. Listen to it. Number five. The Book of Souls by Iron Maiden. Of course Iron Maiden's coming here. Those people hate this album. Well, fuck them. This is amazing. The Red and the Black, masterpiece. Book of Souls, masterpiece. Empire of the Clouds, one of the greatest songs ever made. That melody. <sighs> Come worthy. Come worthy. Yeah, I, I love the long songs in this album. I think they're masterpieces. Um, and you've got some really cool short songs as well. If Eternity Should Fail, come on. Come on. Yeah, um, what, what, what can I say? This album is flawless. It's fantastic. It's better than Final Frontier. Um, way better. I, what, what can I say? It's Iron Maiden. It's got to be here. It's fucking Iron Maiden. So it, it is coming here. Number four, Exercises in Futility by Migwa. Migwa. It just reminds me of Morrowind, the Gwars. So whenever I see a Gwar in Morrowind, I'm just like, Magwar! That's Magwar! Don't run the joke into the ground. This Polish black metal band is is catchy as fuck. This is on the catchy side of black metal. The riffs get stuck in your head, it's more accessible. This is probably a good album and band for people who aren't into black metal to get into them by. This is a good starting point. Fast, furious riffs. Intense vocals, catches or fuck still. It's a good representation of black metal as a whole. It's Migwa, exercising futility. It's amazing. I love the album art. The guy's like, oh. it's amazing. That's what you'll be like, because you want more. Number three, Absolution by Chemis. Now we're on to some doom, epic doom, traditional doom. I think it's traditional Doom because Epic would be the soaring vocals and this doesn't quite have that. But it's still Doom and Doom makes me coon. Chemist, one of my favourite bands of all time. This kind of slow but chunky heavy metal slash Doomy music which we all know and love. Catchy vocals, catchy vocal lines. The choruses are always fun. The riffs are chunky, slow. But also not super slow it's not you know it's not funeral doom or anything it's not stoner doom it's it's just traditional doom it's good old doom one of the best vocalists in doom as well uh i adore chemists everything they touch turns to gold and i want to eat that gold i want to eat, give me eat that gold so this is one of the gold albums from the year chemist absolution i'm not describing it very well but you gotta listen to it you gotta you gotta fucking listen to it if you like stuff like black sabbath you like stuff like um, St. Vitus, Trouble, come on, go give it a listen. It's your duty to listen to this album. Number two now, never thought I'd put this as number two, not number one. Ahab, The Boats of the Glen Carrig, one of my favourite bands of all time, released an album this year. Ooh. Ooh, Red Foam, oh, this is Funeral Doom. Now that was Doom, this is Funeral Doom. But of the nautical variety, you're under the sea, you're seeing some crazy, weird fish stuff. Oh, it's great. This is great. This is, it's one of my favourite bands of all time. What could have beaten it? Another one of my favourite bands of all time, but we'll get to that. This, long passages, hypnotic melodies, great gravelly, gruff voice, which blends into the background, which uh, makes it so atmospheric. It's one of the most atmospheric albums of the year. I love it. It's a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece album. But one beat it. And that's my number one. Swallow the Sun. Songs from the North. One, two, and three. This album is a triple album. So it's about three hours long. The first album is typical Swallow the Sun, Death Doom, Magic. The second album 
is this kind of more acoustic-y, not heavy uh, kind of songs, but still mellow, still melancholic, still beautiful. The third album is them trying Funeral Doom. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. All the songs are fucking tens of tens. It's free albums for one. Free album for the price of one, my boy. Free albums for the price of one. It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful albums of all time. I adore it. Um, what more can I say? Swallow the Sun. Swallow the Sun. One of my favorite bands of all time. They're in my top five now as well, alongside Ahab. Ahab's higher, but uh, I prefer the other albums by Ahab. It's hard to say because I love them so much and I love all of them a 10. All of them a 10, but yeah. Uh, Songs from the North. It's hard. It's like by that much. But yeah, that's my number one of 2015. So again, pop yours down below. What's your favourite albums from this year? What's your least favourite? Let me know. And we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.